The safety of the passengers in a car is everything. That's why car makers are spending many and many hours testing the new cars so they are as safe as possible both for passengers and the pedestrians. Když říkáme, že vozy z Mladé Boleslavy patří mezi nejspolehlivější a nejbezpečnější automobily na světě, tak nepřeháníme. Škoda started this crash test 50 years ago, but back then the cars were not full of electronics or sensors. They had something like a rocket engine behind them. To mark 50 years of crash tests, Škoda has invited journalists to the otherwise inaccessible crash laboratory in Uhelnice near Mladá Boleslav. And in today's Simply Clever podcast, Roman Minařík, head of the Škoda Auto Test Center in Uhelnice, outlines the fascinating history of crash tests. The first crash test was conducted on a runway near Ruzinia Airport in 1972 by the Motor Vehicle Research Institute, UVMV, founded 20 years earlier. At the time, it was more of a homologation test. Škoda wanted to export its Model 100 to France. To the west of the Czech border, there were already some standards valid. And Škoda has to declare that Škoda car fulfilled these requirements. That's why in the year 1972, Škoda has executed the first official homologation test with Škoda Type 100. Uh, the test was by the uh, international, uh, now it's EHK, it's ECE 12. The speed was 48 kilometers per hour and uh, it was the concrete barrier that was the rigid wall test. Uh, in the 70s and 80s, this research institute has uh, executed a lot of tests for all ca cars from the that time Eastern Bloc, uh, like the Trabant, Warburg, Dacia, and so on. Outside on the Rosinia Airport, uh, to move the car, to accelerate the car, it was this steam rocket. The replica of this steam rocket you, you can see here, because the original was stolen and maybe ended in a uh, collection, collection. <laughs> yeah, in a scrap. So this is the replica. Uh, the principle of, of, of the steam rocket was that it was filled with the water, then it was heated with the electricity, and we, uh, when we reached the, the uh, saturated uh, steam in it, the valve in the back was opened and then uh, it pushes the car. The car was stopped by the, by the barrier, but the, but the steam rocket was stopped by the wedge brake. On the monorail there was a wedge and it stops the, the, it stops the, uh, the rocket. So we can use the rocket again and again and again. By the way, the replica of the steam rocket behind the Škoda 100 had a very special code name, Fodršama Rupu Sopr. Yes, it sounds really weird, even in Czech. It's a combination of the first two letters of names of every engineer working on the steam engine. Škoda 100 je na předepsanou rychlost roztlačována pomocí horkovodní rakety vytápěné elektřinou, která se v určitém okamžiku spozdí. Bus pokračuje sám, a naráží do betonové stěny rychlostí 50 km za hodinu. In the 70s and 80s this research institute has uh, executed a lot of tests and that's why they have built in the area of the Avia factory in Prague a new facility, new hall, uh, which has two tracks, two paths, one for the crashing the cars and the second one for the sledge test. The sledge test, typical test for the sledge test you see here, there are sledges and you test some components on it, which is fixed to the sledge and you are testing the components on it. So, very important is to move the car or to move the sledge. That's why uh, the facility was equipped with this uh, gravitation uh, drive which is working on the changing of the potential energy of the weight into kinetic energy of the car. That means the exact weight, what was the water tank filled with the water, from the exact height was transferring to the transmission 
the energy to the kinetic energy of the car and pull it against the concrete block. It was also important to stop this drive. So the car was stopped each time because there was a concrete block there. But the sledge has to be also stopped. And that's why there was a brake developed to stop the sledge by absorbing the energy in a deformation of the steel plate. There was a steel plate here and the sledge goes into this steel and by the deformation of this steel plate it stops. It was possible to, to simulate several deceleration, yes, because we can put thicker material, we can put uh, more plates after each other and, and through this we have stopped the, the sledge. The early 1990s saw another significant shift in safety test after Škoda became part of the Volkswagen Group. The strategic partner TÜV Süd joined the Motor Vehicle Research Institute in 1992. And shortly after that, in 1996, this facility was built. It's the Uhelnice facility. And the original building was very small. If you look at that, the, the wall with the clock, this was the original size of this building in 1996. Anyhow, we have two paths in this building, one for the crashing the cars in the block, which is original from 1996 there. And there was a second path for the sledge, which is now under the floor. We are not using it anymore. In the year 2001, we need to prolong the, uh, the path for another 50 meters. In the year 2001, more and more, the results of the crash were uh, using the signals or values from the sensors which were, which were in, the, in the body, in the dummy. And it was very important that the dummy stays in the correct position for the whole way to the barrier. You know it, when you accelerate, you, you feel that you move in the seat, yeah, because of the acceleration. And if we have short track, we have to use the high acceleration. And there was a risk that the, that the dummy will, will not stay in a position. That's why we have to prolong the, the track and use lower acceleration in, in the beginning to reach the same speed in the end. So it was quite modern in 2001 and we stay with it until 2018. And uh, at that time, it was a huge amount to do a lot of tests, not only the front impacts, where we have the nice block here, but we were asked to do side crashes, uh, pole crashes, rear crashes. So uh, we need more space because it was really a small space here. So it was approved and we have built up a new crash laboratory. That's the new building, that's where you entered. Uh, this is the old one and this New buildings have been built up, so you see we have doubled the, 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 the facility here in 2019. And in that uh, new hall we are able to do all these crashes and also the crashes where the car is going against another car. We have two tracks and one rope or one, uh, one cable and we can move the trolley against the car with the speed of 50 kilometers an hour this so-called MPDB test. We have changed also uh, the, the drive uh, to Messring, Microtech drive. Uh, we are using the lamps in the new hall, which are the LED technology uh, with one kilo lux. It's 100,000 looks uh, from a company Henle in Germany. Uh, this year we have installed a new mobile crash block. You can see it on the, on the left side when you enter the big hall. There is a block uh, with, the, with the pole barrier. It has 100 ton. It has wheels inside and it can lift up, go in the middle of the room, sit down, screw to the floor and uh, we can use it as a, as a fixed barrier there. 
We are also able to do this MPDB test uh, where, the, where the cars are going opposite way. And with this configuration, we are now able to provide uh, our customer, which is mainly Škoda uh, safety department, uh, about 300 tests a year. While in 1972 only two parameters were monitored during crash tests, today technicians can measure thousands of different data points. And high-speed cameras inside and outside the car, which can take up to 200 images per second, are used to document the entire test precisely, and of course many and many meters of data cables. We have the intensive lighting also for the, for the indoor. This is the mastering trolley, which is running under the floor and pulling the car against the, against the barrier. In a certain moment, the car is hanging on, the, on this one and in an exact moment, it opens and the car is continuing uh, itself. We have this, I call it collectors for the data in a car because the car is equipped with more than 100 sensors in a car for the acceleration, for the um, forces, for the deformation and all this information are collected in a car and then this device is sending them via this blue cable into the control room. Each, each uh, position has one control room and we see online the data from the car, from the dummies and we can check if it is correct or not. To adjust the seats to the proper position we are using that red device which is standard device to, to, to set up the seats for the, for the H point and uh, to adjust the proper position of the dummies in the car we are using this optical system with four cameras and uh, with the reflex points on the, on the, on the dummies we are able to, to set the correct position not only of the dummy like the heel point but also of the, he of the head and so on. Hospodárný, spolehlivý, bezpečný automobil Škoda vám vždycky zaručí šťastnou cestu.